All right, so let's go back to this. So what we're going to do today, yeah. So we, today we're going to play with pools. We're going to do one of those uh, pool and beach streams, basically, where we're going to play with a bunch of pools. And uh, we're going to try to get, like, a proper pooling system. And uh, we'll see. So I'm honestly unsure how I'm going to do it. So for, for obviously we have to do it with bullets. And that's going to be the easiest part, I think. First of all, I can move this back. I'm going to use it and we can play the music. We're going to try using the, the Unity pooling system. Because I think it's already done and, and why not use it, right? Uh, but yeah, we're going to do it for bullets first because I think it's a lot easier. And what I'm going to do is just each weapon is going to have its own pool. Which honestly should be enough. Alright, so let's start with the pistol. So the pistol, pistol, shoot, script. So now basically the bullets should just uh, right back. So now they don't fully disappear, they just... Uh, And now once we get... Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Once we get to five, for some reason, they don't reuse them. Oh, no, 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 I see, I see what the issue is. The issue is that the, the time has... The lifetime has passed. Alright, oh, yeah, so now it should work fine. And it should keep going, there you go. So already we can tell that we probably don't need five. But five seems okay. Alright, so now let's try to work with the the enemies themselves, which I think it is going to be... I mean, first of all, we have to rethink the whole, like, spawn thing. So I'm thinking, because I'm not sure it's still, like, what I want to do. So I, I either want to have, like, a different pool. So dynamically create pools for each type of enemy. Or I want to have... One pool that contains all of the different types of enemies. And then just make sure that I initialize it properly. So here, that that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm spawning in objects based on that. And the only other thing I'm changing is I'm changing this. So I think we're going to do that. For now, I think it's probably going to be the best option. Alright, let me look at what I wanted to do. So I'm not sure what I wanted to do anymore. I think this is done. Move enemies out of the screen. Yes, I guess we can do this. And then we can work on this. We'll see. Let's do the, the move enemies outside of the screen. So I looked online, and there's many ways to do it. But the easiest way. Wait a minute. Look at them. Okay, yeah, it's not working, as you can see. Well, it is kind of working, but it's a little bit crazy because they do it around the center. Why do they do it around the center? Oh, I see what they do around the center. <laughs> Now the problem of that as well is I do like the idea of creating a force by moving around the enemies. But like if I create a horde, and then I move it outside of the map, and then I come back, I guess it's still there, it's just a few of them. Wait, there's an issue there. I'm actually going to place a an FPS counter. Seems 
Is that about right? But then I also want to have a, so a wave system that has certain intervals, or certain positions, certain times, I guess. It does something specific. It's a me, Mario. All right, so what are we gonna do today? Today it's a dev day. And last time we were, well, I was struggling to figure out how to do the thing, the the new spawn system for the enemies and the pools. So I decided, so I'm still actually not, I'm not exactly sure. I think the way I'm gonna do it now is that I'm gonna have a pool. I'm gonna try to convert it so that, because at the end of the day, enemies are just the difference between the enemies are different different sprites and uh, and just different stats basically. I mean, there's a couple of extra things, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a system that everything's gonna be basically in a couple of scripts, right? Uh, like in a movement script, in an attack script, or whatever, and uh, or like the movement script is probably gonna take care of the attack as well, because most of the attacks are gonna be related to the. Because if it's a range, for example, then it has to stop moving earlier. Right, and kind of stay at a certain distance and attack. And if it does some kind of charge, then it also has feelings. So anyways, the point is, it's going to be like based on a couple of stats. And I could have like some kind of enum that tells you also what type of uh, behavior it has. The, the way I'm going to do it, I think it's going to be, it's going to be like that. So like, just by changing the sprite and the, the a couple of stats, just the basic stat, movement speed, attack damage, and uh, well, not attack damage, but... Attack cooldown, I guess, and, and some other stuff. I kind of change the character quite easily. I'm going to have a single pool in that case. And what we're going to change is that instead of... Because right now, the way that we have it is we are creating the types of characters when we add them to the pool the first time. So when we create the object. And now what I'm going to do is when we spawn the object, so when we re place it in the world is when we're going to decide what kind of object it is, what kind of enemy it is. So the first thing we're going to, we're going to see is that, 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 yes, for now, right now, what I'm going, to, what I'm doing is I have one single pool, by the way, here, I'm getting them from the pool as well. And I'm thinking that I might do this guys outside of a pool. We'll see though. Maybe not. Well, it doesn't, no, no, never mind. It doesn't have to be if I do it the way I want it. So the way I'm doing it here, right? If it is a, create an enemy meaning that it's creating a new object that's when I'm, I'm changing the the stats so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that only by adding a couple of lines here of different stats that i'm changing it's enough here i'm, I'm intensiating different prefabs and that's why i cannot change it right now but the idea is i'm going to change this so that there's only one enemy prefab and i can just change a couple of settings and that is going to change uh the enemy completely so obviously right now what we have is go to prefabs uh, enemies so right now i've got two enemies obviously they're using the same sprite but like imagine the color as a different sprite and the only thing that changes is the sprite itself the stats here and that's literally it and then there is like the the not the default move but the enemy move and the other thing it has like an animal should cool down but i am taking the sprites from the the combat manager so it doesn't really matter so as long as i know I would have to have a way of actually knowing here what type of enemy I am. So probably like an Ent or an Inum or something. And then I'll use that as, as the, the number here, right? But that's pretty much going to be it. And here, for example, as the other thing is Simple Spawn, I have both a prefab array and a, pre and a you know, scriptable object array. But I'm, if I only, at that point, I would only need a scriptable object. In the just the scriptable object will have to be a lot bigger right because it not only will have this but it will also have a uh, extra like behavior thing yeah so anyways today i thought we would do something else entirely actually which is i want to work on uh on a we'll work on a different scene and the idea what is i want to make a so i mean let's let's look at this because because i mean i haven't really changed it but like so i want to rework the new spawn system entirely and uh, and the pool system which is what I've been talking about right now, which is I have to change the way that I spawn characters and the way I make uh, enemies as well. Then I'd like to, I don't think we'll make this 
so yeah, I, I don't think we'll make all of these. And that's I could I can take a look at this uh, briefly, which is I can actually instead of having a collider, which is what I was using before, I can simply using the render I can check whether or not it's visible or invisible, right? Whether it became visible or whether it became invisible, which I think is going to be more because it's just something that is happening regardless <laughs> of me adding or not adding a thing. So I think it works fine. So what I want to do here is actually I want to work on a uh, a basically how do you call this a like enemy enemy proportion change over time, basically, meaning that if I start like I, the game will start and you have 100 percent of all of the enemies will be of type one, let's say. But as the game progresses, then suddenly a type 2 starts appearing. And by, let's say, minute 2, there is 50-50. And then by minute 3, there is 100% uh, of type 2 and 0% of type 1. So I want to I wanna have... I want to work on that system that slowly changes from one, one set uh, proportion to another set proportion. So if I say at the beginning is going to be X, then... Uh, uh, you know, minute two is going to be Y, and I want that change to happen progressively, basically. So that's what I want. To, I'm going to work today, basically, and I'm, I'm hopefully I can work on something that changes the game a little bit. But we'll see. So this is going to be purely a debug, like a testing, testing scene. So I'm going to call it testing scene. Exactly. So now I have different time steps, right? So in element zero, I want this to happen. So this is time zero because the proportion that I want. And in that case, I'm going to have only type zero, like only type one. And it's going to have a proportion of one, meaning 100% of them are going to be type one. Right. Then I'm going to have a time, let's say a time two. I'm going to have a proportion of two elements in this case. One type one, which is going to be 0 0.5 and type two, which is also going to be 0 0.5. Then I would have to make sure that I do this correctly, of course. And then here we're going to have at time three, well, at time four. So we do it at, at the same amount. We're going to make it so that we only have one type three, for example, and see how it changes. And then this is one. So we would have three different time steps. And at first we only have type one, then we have type one and type two, and then all of them disappear and uh, it takes place in type three. should take the whole thing so we're here then we're going to this one type T should take the whole thing and then all of them should start appearing and mostly because that two was already there this one is just slowly uh, reducing there you can see here the little error of the 0 0.01 which doesn't exist all right so that works very well So I think now it should be good right now. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Yeah, okay, now it's working fine. So there should be a lot more ones and zeros. I mean, a lot more zeros than ones. And slowly that should shift uh, the other way around.
Okay. So there's definitely more of these than yellows. And now we are at minute one. So again, we get that the proportion is zero. Should be zero seventy-seven of type one. Uh, we're doing more speed. How long have I been streaming just for this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, well, this is <laughs> the end. 